I'm currently on a two-week residency at the Malbach Residency in North Wales and I had planned to do a daily vlog, like just kind of update each day and then put it together as one video. But I'm six days in and this is the first time I feel like I can sit down and talk to the camera because it has just been like the most overwhelming time and I just didn't really know how to say what I needed to say and I feel like I needed to process the days before just... I don't really know, I just didn't really have words for the experience until today and even now I'm not sure I'm going to make much sense. I looked out the window and I thought what a beautiful day because it was foggy like normally you can see hills behind me and you can't today and it's beautiful and I walked out and then I realized it's really wet and cold what a surprise if I properly looked out the window I would have just noticed that this isn't the weather but anyway I'm here now um so I'm just gonna get a bit wet and cold I think sat here Winnie's not happy with me but there we go so yeah I arrived on Saturday in the afternoon and I think the thing that's kind of thrown me off about this residency is that I was really worried about the car journey here. Like, I'm such an anxious driver. I'm so much better than I was, but I was really, really anxious about that. And I couldn't think past that anxiety to anything else. The drive was fine. I was worried about finding charging points for the car, but actually I found loads and it was way better than I thought. And like I coped and yeah. It was good. And then I arrived and I met the lovely hosts here, Scarlett and Jake. And we had a nice cup of tea and then I went to settle in. And the artist that I'm sharing with, Ellis, wasn't able to arrive till the Monday. So I knew I had a couple of days, just me, in the studio and in the apartment. So I went and I unpacked and walked Winnie. I mean, walked to Barmouth, which is, um, hang on, let me move the camera. So that bridge there leads to Barmouth that you can just see in the distance and it's a very sweet little town. Walked over there, walked back in the pitch black actually because it got dark and then I had dinner with Scarlett and Jake which was lovely to get to know them. But I think it was the anticipation of meeting Alice actually, like I wasn't, because we'd never met. And it's quite a big thing for me as a, like an introvert, an anxious introvert to live with someone I haven't met before. Just living with people that I don't know was just like, Scarlett and Jake are so welcoming and lovely, but I was just, I'm so aware of my impact on others and always worrying if I've said the right thing, if I've done the right thing. It's been a lot of anxiety in that respect. Gosh, my phone is getting so wet, hang on. I've moved now to a slightly more sheltered spot, but every time I sit down near the bracken, I end up with a tick on me. So um, I'm not going to sit here for very long. I know all about Lyme's disease, so don't worry. I am being careful. So I was processing all that. And then I met Ellis, the artist I'm sharing with, on Monday. And she is just the loveliest person. And straight away I was like, oh, it's going to be OK. And I felt so relieved. And I felt like I can relax into this now. The first day I did a reduction wood engraving. And I was like pegged the, all the prints up outside the house, which is right by the estuary. And then I was like, oh, it's getting a bit windy, but I think it's fine. And then a gusty wind came and took eight of my prints into the estuary. And luckily, I actually managed to get six back, although not in particularly good condition. But I just went and retrieved them so they didn't end up in the sea. Um, so that was quite amusing. But I enjoyed making that um, reduction print on the first day. And then, yeah, I've just been collaging and sketching and painting. And then on Wednesday night, my friend Sam arrived, who is starting out as a filmmaker. He lives about an hour and a half north of here, and I'd suggested that he come and make a film. He arrived Wednesday night, and then we spent all of yesterday, which was Thursday, filming, which was really fun and also, like, just so... felt quite intense because I was printing and trying to make sense when I was talking, which I don't think I managed a lot of the time. But that was a really good experience, and he just left this morning, so now I'm like, right, I really need to knuckle down now and get making. I started sketching on a block this morning and it's the biggest block I bought here. It's the maple block I packed if you've seen the last video and basically on Wednesday I walked out to Fairborn Beach which is actually about a 50 minutes to an hour walk from here. It looks really close on the map but it just takes a while to get there and um, it was coming up to high tide and I noticed all these sheep that had got stranded in the middle of I guess they're salt marshes or I don't really know what they are. It's just like land that's 
covered twice a day with the high tide. And there were these sheep that were just stranded on tiny bits of grass and then it got to the point where some of them were up to their bellies and water and they were just standing there and they were so calm. And I was like, how are they not panicking? Does this happen all the time? And they're like, oh no, it's happened again. We'll just wait it out. But it was cold and windy and it was just like a kind of amazing thing to see. It was like, it was such a weird thing to come across. And I took some pictures and videos and I was like, I need to paint that or something. And then today I was like, I want to do a print of that. And I thought, no one wants a print of sheep that are kind of stranded in an estuary. Why would you want that on your wall? It's a bit of a weird image, a bit of a distressing image. They were fine because obviously it was high tide, but then, you know, within an hour and a half, they would have been free again and able to go and graze. But it just felt like symbolic of something that I haven't quite worked out yet. So yeah, I started to sketch that out and we'll see what comes of that. And I just decided I really feel like I want to make this and if no one wants it, that's fine. But I just feel like, I mean, when you do a wood engraving, you know it's going to take hours, weeks, days. And to not sell any after all that work is like, my, the business person in me is like, that's a terrible idea. But it just feel like something I need to do. I really want to write a poem to go with it as well. I feel like there's a poem in it. But anyway, so that's what I'm doing today. I feel like that's probably enough summary for the day. And I'll check back in a bit more regularly from now on. But um, yeah, to summarise, it's been amazing. It's been overwhelming. But Winnie wants to go now, so we're going to go. I've come back into the dry now to work in the studio and I just thought I'd show you the block I was just talking about. So, so yeah, that one was just waiting, I guess, for the rest of the flock to join in them. There were quite a few here that were on grass and then they gradually, there was no grass at all. These two, that was like the saddest. Like they, I just felt sad. Anyway, and then the ones in the background that were up to their bellies. But I think they just get so busy grazing, they just forget and then between, this looks like, oh, it's just water covering grass, but it's not, there were, there's deep bits where there's, you know, the sheep would have to fully swim. There's like channels in it. So they are kind of stranded. I added an egret there. I know egrets aren't black, but I just needed the contrast for the drawing. Um, and then I'm gonna add some oyster catchers. And I think this is just gonna be a monochrome print. Yeah, it's on maple wood, which I in the past have absolutely hated working with. So that makes me apprehensive about this. We'll see how it goes. So anyway, yeah, I'm gonna add some oyster catchers because I think otherwise it would just look like a field. I need to really make sure that it's obvious because I'm doing it in black and white that that's water and that's going to be the challenge for this block I think. And I added some geese in the top because geese have been flying around a lot so I have seen them but the composition felt so flat without something going on at the top there and I will regret that because I have to engrave around them to add in details of the sky but I think it'd be worth it. You can see Ellis's amazing oil paintings in the background. Um, she's just gone out so I've got the studio to myself for a bit. It's a couple of days later now, it's Sunday, so I've been here eight days and this morning I cut up nearly all the mono prints that I've made so far because I just thought they looked really flat, so I've been making collages with them this morning. If you want to see what I did yesterday, I will have now released a day in the live type video of Saturday and I do a bit of mono printing in that video actually. So here are the collages so far, so there's that one. This one, there's actually another one drying over there as well, but uh, this one's not finished. I want to add um, different like shapes to the foreground. When you don't think about jumping off because it's too high. Um, this one and this one, I think they're so much more successful as collages. So I feel good about that. They just need to dry um, and then I can put them back on the wall because at the moment it feels like I haven't got any work up. So anyway, today is like really windy. It doesn't lend itself to printing outside and that looks like uh, the rest of the week really, like the rest of the time I'm here looks quite wet and not great. I think Wednesday might be okay for printing outside. But I just thought, I spent quite a lot of time in the woods yesterday and it was really misty and lovely. And I just thought I could take this block out to the woods just at the back of the house. All right, Winnie. So normally with printmaking, you work from light to dark so that you put your lightest color down first if you can because the colors sit so much better on top of each other that way. I'm thinking if I print the dark color first, like a gray or a blue, then 
I can engrave the branches and then put a light colour on top and if it works I think it will end up looking like a nice misty print. So I think I want to try and do that today. So I'll go engrave outside but then I'll come back here to print because it is windy and wet. So um, that's my plan, that's what I'm going to do today. So I'll take some footage so you can see how it goes. But yeah, I'm feeling more settled in the residency now. I'm really hoping time will start to slow down because it's gone so fast. I think because everything's been so overwhelming. Like when you start a new job and everything's like, you're taking it all in and it goes really fast, it's like that. And I'm hoping this last week will drag in a good way. I feel like there's been so many missed opportunities where I was just kind of feeling overwhelmed and I wasn't as productive as I wanted to be. So yeah, I'm hoping to make up for that this week. It's a couple of days later now and it's sunny today which feels like a revelation because I think we've been living in mist for ages. I'm just engraving a block today and doing a reduction print but I'm running out of daylight quite fast and I'm feeling a bit stressed about that because tomorrow's going to be wet again. But the woodland misty block that I was making the other day, I was really pleased with at the end because I felt it did depict the misty woodland. There were definitely things I'd changed and mistakes I made but yeah, I felt like I learned a lot working from dark to light and it was hard to get my head around what I was taking away was going to be areas of dark rather than areas of light, like the way I worked kind of switched. But it, it had a, um, a really interesting effect and it made me want to do a similar print again but bigger. So that was a really good print to do. I did a reduction print yesterday from the window in the sitting room because it was a really rainy day yesterday so I needed to shelter inside. And yeah, I'm doing a reduction print today so I'm just trying to get as much work done before I leave. I feel really relaxed and comfortable here now and um, I'm just really happy here and I feel a bit like, oh, I don't want to leave in a couple of days. but. It'll be good to go home and see my husband who's been missing me and Winnie and I really need to reply to my emails because all that kind of thing has kind of fallen by the wayside while I've been here. So you can't make art all day forever or be on holiday forever but um, it's been really nice to have this break. Today is my last full day at the residency and I'm really sad to be leaving. I'm just heading up to there's some waterfalls near here that I didn't really know we were there until last night and I was like, oh my God, I need to go see them. To be fair, I haven't done much exploring since being here. I've walked to the nearest town across the bridge, Barmouth, four or five times. I think five times, because I just love that bridge. And I've gone to Fairborn Beach a good few times, but that's it really because, oh, I just was so happy where I was. The view from the studio is just amazing. It's, I wasn't like feeling I needed to go and seek a better view than that. I think part of my personality and being anxious means that when I find something I like, I kind of stick to it because it's safe. And that feeds into like walks and things. Like I just like repeating things, hence why I haven't done too much exploring. But that's okay, I don't think I needed to. I had such a nice time just exploring the walks I did. Anyway, as you can see, it's another wet day today. It wasn't meant to be, but when I looked out the window this morning, I was like, oh no, hence the hat and the hood. I didn't sleep well last night, so I feel really tired. I actually have had insomnia for nine days now, or nine nights, should I say, which has been a bit of a struggle. So if I look tired, that is why. But this morning I got up and I proofed the high tide sheet block, which, um, yeah, I need to work on the contrast. I've already worked back into it once, but it needs a bit more engraving, a bit more thought. And now I'm thinking, should it be a reduction print? Anyway, I think it does look like water that they're surrounded by. So that's good. I've made a list of things I want to include in this last bit of the video to make sure I've covered as much as possible and I've asked for your questions, so I'll try and answer them in this last bit. So the accommodation, I haven't really talked about. I showed the studio in the packing vlog I did. Yeah, it's such a lovely apartment at the top of the house. And like they've thought of lots of things like there's things, you know when you go on holiday? So we do self-catering holidays a lot as a couple. And often you arrive and there's like not really anything there, but they had porridge oats, oil, um, like a couple of tins of things if you didn't have any food, a few different teas. It's just like way more homely than most places and um, like yesterday I was making a cake and I didn't have any jam and I just went down and asked Scarlett can I borrow some jam and like that's something that I would normally feel really uncomfortable doing but they're so welcoming and like nothing's too much of an ask 
yeah, it's just a really nice place to be. The sitting room is really cosy. There's a log fire with logs that you can use. And the two bedrooms are either side of the main studio. And it's just like really nicely set up. So to get to the apartment, which is at the top of a three story house, you walk through basically two households kind of to get through it. So the stairs run through the apartments. I was saying to Scarlett yesterday, when I first arrived, I was thinking, oh, I feel like a bit awkward. Even though they said like, come and go as you want. If the doors are closed, then you just know like not to come in any of our rooms, but otherwise we're happy to chat. Come on, Winnie. And I think because I wouldn't have been okay with that, I would be like, oh, there's strange people in my house walking through it. I felt a bit awkward about it, but I like I soon realised like they're totally happy with that setup, and you know they've chosen that setup. And then I felt like so much more comfortable. So you just walk through their apartment basically to get outside, which is fine and quite nice because then you often bump into them and have a little chat. And Scarlett and Jake, the hosts, have cooked us dinner three times, which was really lovely to kind of catch up. And I made a couple of cakes to bring down and. Yeah, a nice sociable aspect, but you don't have to socialise if you don't want to, but they're very happy to. So yeah, that's been really lovely. I feel like I'm so breathy because I'm talking and walking and it might be a really unpleasant experience for you. And Jake is involved with Draw Brighton, which is online drawing um, sessions. And on Monday, Alice, the artist I'm sharing with, modelled. I had the opportunity to do it, but I was like way too shy for that. That was really good, and I got to do a monoprint of her. Although I was so out of my comfort zone, I haven't like observed a person and drawn them in like possibly since uni. So I was a bit tense, and I was worried what she thought. And it was just funny when she saw it because both of us liked the print, but I made her look so old and tired. So yeah, just things like that are really different to what I normally experience, and it was like a really good thing to be doing something different. So, so since I last recorded, I have walked for like an hour and a half and um, it's quite wet. And I thought, oh, I'll just finish the video during my walk, but I don't know if I can finish the video looking like this. Because I started the video looking like this and um, I just didn't think it was a good look looking back when I was editing. Our fog waterfalls are amazing like walking up through them almost the whole path up which is quite steep the waterfalls are alongside you and it's just really amazing and yeah it's not an ideal day there's no part of me that isn't soaked put it that way but I think it was more dramatic because there was so much water in the waterfalls and then I got to the top and I was like well I've done most of the climb I might as well go to the lakes or reservoirs uh, it said lakes on the sign so maybe it's a lake but i thought google said it was a reservoir anyway it's owned by the national trust so i've come up here and now i'm crouched by a picnic bench because i was hoping there might be like a little fishing hut up here there isn't so i put the camera under the bench and i'm just continuing to get wet but it's been such a nice walk there was a point where i thought i was lost and it was quite misty and it wasn't ideal but i messaged my husband sam and he sent me the os app so I didn't get lost. Wasn't really prepared to come for such a long walk, but I'm gonna have um, a cereal bar now and um, yeah, prepare for the descent. Anyway, while I'm here and having a bit of a break from walking, I'll continue my list of things I wanted to cover in this video. So just wanted to like show you um, the artwork of the other artists that are here. I feel like this is absolutely ridiculous filming this here, but here we go. So there's Jake who creates amazing drawings. He is so skilled at what he does and I walked in on the first day into his studio and I was like, oh my God, I've never seen anything like this. Like, it's just, his skill is amazing and he creates beautiful work. And then Scarlett, his partner, creates really interesting and moving lithographs and she also works in etched lino, I believe. And yeah, just amazing, inspiring work to be around. I spent yesterday in her studio because I did a day of wood engraving with her. So that was really nice. And then Ellis, who I've been sharing my living space with and the studio with, and it's just been like so lovely because we've been so respectful of each other's needs. And if we're just not feeling social, we just tell each other. And we were just like that from the off and we've got on so well, but we've also had lots of time on our own. I guess we're both just really serious about our art and we had things we wanted to do on this residency. So we knew when we were in the studio that we just wanted to put our headphones in and concentrate on our work. So yeah, that was really lovely. And watching her work was really inspiring because she has such a good attitude for life. Like she absorbs the surroundings 
for most of the day and then she'll she'll start working at four because she knows that's when she's most productive and she'll work maybe till 10 and like it's amazing the amount of paintings she's produced in this residency it was like quite intimidating to be honest seeing how much work she was producing especially as she arrived two days after me but yeah she creates really beautiful work but is also inspired by the landscape in a really similar way to how I am it was a really wonderful experience to share with her it could have been so different I think if I was paired with someone who I didn't get on with or who just needed different things but yeah it was really really lovely all right I'm gonna go in a sec because this is just getting ridiculous yeah I think it was ridiculous to even get my phone out but um I'll put the links to all three of them in the description so you can have a look at their websites and social media. And also another resident I spent a bit of time with was Toby, the cat, who wasn't like a huge fan of Winnie, but put up with her really well. And one day he did end up a tree. I was walking Winnie and he goes for walks with Jake and Scarlett. He like follows them on their walks and um, he saw Winnie and he was like, no, and ran up a tree and then Jake had to get a ladder to get him down. But they did, to be fair, get on pretty well. Right, I'm going to go now and get back home and then get into a dry change of clothes. But lovely walk. Would recommend this one. I've just finished packing the car and I thought I need to finish what I was saying yesterday before it got too wet. It's a really beautiful morning today here and I decided to paint the landscape in front of the house just as like one last bit of art to make. Lucy from the Small Yellow Bird sent me a concertina book that she'd made and um, it worked really well with the landscape here. So I was doing that this morning and I've really enjoyed painting when I've been here in my sketchbook and that's something I definitely want to do more of when I get back. I really liked using like bold colours with the paintings and how immediate sketching is compared to printmaking. After I was absolutely drenched at the top of that walk yesterday, it got a bit clearer as I was walking back and you could start to see Barmouth Bridge and it was really lovely. And then when I got back, I finally wrote some postcards. I've been meaning to do it for the whole time and on the last day is when I sent them. So I will actually beat the postcards home. I had a bit of a goal when I arrived and that was to create five reduction wood engravings. And I did that, I did five. And then I did the sheep wood engraving as well. And yeah, I feel like they actually got more successful the more I went on. It's not always the case where progression like that is linear. But um, this time I felt like, yeah, I could see the progression in my prints. I think the turning point was the misty woodland print when I was kind of realizing a limited color palette is actually really powerful instead of trying to fit all the colors in that I can see. And then I did the misty hillside print that I really like and the sense of fog. And then the print I did of the estuary as well that I felt was successful with the limited colour palette. I know I wouldn't have made those prints if it hadn't been quite bad weather with all the rain and the fog. So I'm really grateful actually for the fact it wasn't sunny like this the whole time, although I'm sure I would have made other things that I would have learnt from if it had been sunny. Someone asked me what it was like two weeks versus one week. So the last residency I did was just a self-directed one. I just booked a little holiday house in Appledore in North Devon. So if you're interested in that, go check that out on my channel. But um, the more time you have doesn't necessarily mean the more work you have. If you've got limited time, you really can fit a lot in because you know the time's limited. I felt like if I'd only been here one week, I still would have been working things out towards the end of that week. Just like where I was, how I was feeling about things and the work I was making. Whereas this second week, I felt really at home and just really loved creating. So for me, I felt like the two weeks was really valuable. But the one week residency I did in December, I still got loads out of that and that was plenty of time as well. Someone else asked about funding so I paid for this residency. It was cheaper because I shared with Ellis but there's other things you can do to make it cheaper such as getting public transport here and there is a little train station just at the end of the drive. I'm going to wrap it up here just because this video could go on forever because I've got like loads I could say about this residency but I really enjoyed it. I am um, I feel like I learned a lot. I feel like I learned a lot from Ellis and her attitude towards like soaking up the landscape as being part of her practice and not always just physically working like painting or printmaking. So it was really nice to spend time on her and um, learn from her. It's just been a really great experience. It's challenged me in lots of ways and I feel really, really sad to leave. But I really do want to visit again. I want to see more of the landscape. We, we went to some talks last night that Scarlett had organised at the local village hall. I think it's called a Skarsbach. Skarsbach? 
oh, my Welsh hasn't improved at all. And it was a series of speakers, Ellis was one of them, and they had 20 slides and they had to talk about each slide in 20 seconds. And lots of the talks were about art, but also nature and the landscape around here, and it was really inspiring, and I just thought there's so much to explore around this part of Wales. So I definitely visit again, and I definitely recommend this residency. I think anyone that gets to do it is really lucky. And yeah, definitely apply if you're thinking about it when the applications are open. So me and Winnie want to say thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. There have been either two or three previous videos related to the residency. One about packing for the residency, and I give a little tour of the studio here. One is about a day in the life at this residency, and then the other one, which I think will be out by the time you're watching, but if it's not, it will be out next week, is when Sam came and made the film, and I'm going to be doing a little intro to that, and then the film will be in that video as well, so that's exciting. So I think that would have come out before you watch this, but I'm not totally sure. So yeah, thank you, and um, I'll be back soon with another video, and I don't know what it will be yet.